We have reduced heating and electricity bills. So folks have more money in their pocket to buy things like school supplies, replace the dishwasher, or take a family vacation. We do this work because we know that when we lower costs for working people, when working people can buy a home, when working people can thrive, our nation thrives. That was Vice President Kamala Harris giving the Biden administration credit for lowering heating and electricity bills as Americans deal with record high energy prices. Joining us now, Kudlow host, Larry Kudlow. It's always great to see you. I don't know what world she lives in, because in my world, the prices have been going up. And I'm mm. guessing at the vice president's house, she probably doesn't even see an energy bill, Larry. Just looking at the numbers, okay? Numbers, oh my God, factoids since they came into office. <laughs> Energy's up 24% overall. Motor fuels up 32 percent. Gasoline is up 31 and a half percent. Electricity is up 11 percent. Utility gas is up 29 percent. I, I don't know what, what plan. She was reading the plan. page upside down. That was a problem. Oh, she just had it upside oh, down. Yeah. Maybe. Why didn't I think of that? That's exactly right. I mean, uh, gas is down from the peak, but they spent. Uh, almost half of the strategic petroleum reserve mm -hmm. to get it down. So they compromised our energy security and our national security. You know, nowadays, don't remember in the 1970s, Spro was begun because of the Arab oil embargo. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, you know, Lord knows what might happen uh, again today. I want to, I have a second point. Mm. Why not? Let me stop there. I, I well, want, let me stop talk there. to the second point because we're hearing you could get more sanctions on Russia when we think about energy security and the amount of barrels that we are or are not producing. Are the sanctions working and is energy the way to do sanctions? You know, I think, Keller, um, there are a bunch of reasons why the sanctions have not worked. Okay. We're just going to interrupt you. KJP just announced more sanctions at the press briefing a few minutes ago. KJP. But you can continue. Okay, well, good for her. But <laughs> the point is, uh, the problem with this is that we never really imposed the toughest possible sanctions on the Russian central bank. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, it's all the transactions that we carved out, we actually carved out energy mm -hmm. uh, exceptions. To these sanctions. So, long and short is Russia is still producing right. 10 million barrels per day. Mm -hmm. I just want to make still a year ago, 10 million. And India and China are buying it. Well, I think at that a discount. I, and we're clearing out the SPR here. And not much of a discount, yeah. I might add. And uh, I think you're right. China and India made up whatever slack came from the EU, for example, or the US. The US never did import much. But, I mean, that's a tragedy, and that's his whole, that's all they have, right? It's just, Russia's just a beat up old gas station, and uh, that's, so, if you go through the numbers, mm. and I'm going to use $80 a barrel, mm -hmm. right, European crude, Brent crude, whatever, sure. um, he's ahead by $75 billion, okay? Just hang with me for one second on this. 10 million barrels a day, $80 a barrel is 800 million bucks a day. For the whole year, it's 292 billion, just under 300. That's how much they make for the year. That's yeah. enough to fight a war, okay? Mm -hmm. right. Now, if you go back pre-COVID, uh, during the energy independence days for Trump, it averaged uh, $60, okay? Not 80, but right. 60. And I might add, Putin benefited from 100 around, oh, the, sure. around the thing. But at 60, uh, dollars a barrel that was 219 billion so he's made a tidy 75 billion dollars actually the number is 73 billion dollars now look that number 73 billion dollars first of all putin price skims off 30 40 percent of it but mm -hmm. that's ha he's playing with house money do you understand but we are the house right right what's happened here is biden's war on oil which has held down production we're still 
to this day, but only that... doing 12 million, hang on, 12 million barrels a day, okay? Pre-COVID, we were doing right. 13 plus million barrels a day. The Energy Department said by 2023, we should be at 15 million barrels a day. So the price is way too high because Biden's war on fossil fuels. And that's why I think Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine in the first yes. place. He saw the door open yes. and he said, I'm walking right on in, President so, Biden. Thank you. So wait, he has a history here. This is my last point, okay? He has a history here. When oil gets to 100 bucks, uh, just about 100 bucks, let's see, $130 a barrel in July of 2008, all right? Uh, Putin picked off most of Georgia, mm -hmm. took a nice chunk out of Georgia. Because yep. right, he had the money, right. okay? It's his only cash crop. When oil crossed $100 a barrel in February 2014, a few years later, he picked off Crimea, mm -hmm. okay? And then roughly one year ago, as oil was approaching $100 a barrel, he went into Ukraine. The point is, we, the U.S., are subsidizing him because of our stupid, right. non-common sense policies. Not only are we keeping oil prices way too high because yeah. of supply and demand, we don't produce enough, we are giving him a big profit over what he should have in the first place. And of course, uh, this war is going to okay. go on forever. So we're hamstringing ourselves yes. big time. Yes. There's got to be a yes. showdown, Larry. How do you change things? Republicans have the House. They've got nothing else except you got this debt ceiling thing. Is there any way they can leverage that issue this summer you know, I, to get some kind of change? Because otherwise, what you're telling me is the weakness we see now is the weakness we're going to have into the future. Yeah, I don't see it changing. Uh, as Jackie said, India and China buying it up anyway, and others, you know, yeah. rogue states. So you ask a very hard question because I don't know what the end game here is. Right. Okay, I, I, I'm not smart enough to know. I know the Russians are not moving out of eastern Ukraine. Right. Come hell or high water, and they're not going to give up Crimea. But putting all that aside, uh, I think, to your point, what the House Republicans should do, I've said this uh, to McCarthy, I've said this to Scalise, I've said this to anybody that'll listen, H.R. 1, okay, H.R. 1, turn all the spigots back on. Mm -hmm. Go for energy independence. And look, I'm not uh, opposed to wind or solar. Mm -hmm. What you should do is go back to the all of the above mm -hmm. policy. Right. Don't punish fossils because right. you're rewarding Russia right. and other rogue right. states and you're killing middle class people. It's costing them four or five hundred dollars a month in extra, uh, apart from what uh, our distinguished uh, vice president says. So H.R. 1, I've always said that. I know they have to, they're going to cut spending in the debt ceiling right. and they're going to give a tough budget for FY24 reconciliation and so forth and they should extend the Bush, ta uh, the Bush, the Trump tax cuts. But H.R. 1, sh Open the spigots right. wide. Right. Let's get to 14 or 15 million barrels a day. So the price of oil in the world market will come back down to 50 bucks, right. but he'll maybe never 45 do it. bucks. Brian and Jackie, I think it's interesting too with the sanctions. We're targeting Russia banks, Russia defense, technology, and other actors who are trying to backfill and evade those sanctions, but nothing about energy specifically. He's got to cripple the engine. We never, this is the damnedest thing I ever saw. The central bank, all the transactions there go through the central bank. It's different than the United States. It's not an open yeah. market. It's not a free market, right? Right. We allowed carve-outs mm -hmm. for a number of areas, including energy. Mm -hmm. So we never really put the clamps down. Yeah. It's the dumbest thing yeah. to this day. And anyway, Brian, professor, economic Sir. sanctions economic sanctions yeah. do not have a great history, you know, of all the Certainly ways... Certainly don't right they, now. Not they, when you're they, decoupled from they, the country already. They, they, they don't do well, economic sanctions, and they wind up punishing the home country. And what yeah. I'm saying here is Biden's war on oil is really financing Putin's right. war in Ukraine. Now, I ask you, what good is that? Who's getting hurt here? Yeah. And we're doing, we're doing $120, $30 billion a year to the Ukraine? Yeah. Really? You think, how long do you think that's going to last? Yeah, no, no clamps on Russia, lots of clamps on the U.S. Yes. In our energy. We got the wrong clamps 
in the wrong place. But we got the right guy on set to talk about it all. Larry, they're screaming at we. I know. We got to go. I, I appreciate it. Larry Kudlow swooping on stage. Thank Where's you for the being puppies? with us. Where's the puppies? No, no, no puppies, no puppies this time. today. We'll, we'll bring something else for you next time. Be sure to tune in to Kudlow weekdays at 4 p.m. Eastern right here on Fox Business.